Greetings fellow adventurers, my name is Whitley Hain and welcome to Every time a Primark was nearly killed by a Space Marine, Warhammer 40k lore by Major Kill. So that's a, <laughs> that's a long title, but this is one of those subjects that I actually love. Because, well, Primarchs are basically the main characters of Warhammer 40k. They like, literally have, I don't know, their, their, their destiny on their side. They have their Primark aura, they have... Whatever the heck Big E put in them that makes them a bit more important to the to the universe than other characters. So they kind of have luck on their side, I guess, to some degree. And also, I've seen some of these instances before. Like, for example, Rhylanor with the Demon Fulgrim. Um, or the fact that... What was his name? The, the Black Templar guy, what was his name? He's not Halbert, Hal, Halbert, Hal, I forgot the name of that one too, Halbert? Not that one, Halbert, I, I forgot, but not that one, the other one, Sigismund, of course, I mean, obviously, that's, I'm bad with names, okay, if you think it's that I forgot a character, it's not that I forgot a character, I, for, I just forget names very easily, <laughs> so, um, even Sigismund fought Fulgrim at some point, and, um, basically managed to, I think it was cut, like a very small cut on him, which made Fulgrim actually angry. So, it is possible to injure a Primarch by, you know, like a Space Marine or something like that. I'm not sure if anything else of the stuff of the sort happened that I remember. I'm trying to think, but I cannot really think of anything right now. But anyway, let's just, let's just go in and see. Enough yapping. Uh, I forgot to close Spotify. Let's go to the video now. <laughs> Here we are. G'day, guys and gals. There's a saying in Warhammer 40k: only a Primarch can kill another Primarch. That's an actual saying. But is that actually true? Well, the evidence would suggest it's not. Primarchs are tough as hell, but a nuke to the face, an orbital strike, hundred bolt guns, or a roundhouse kick to the head by Chuck Norris. Uh-huh. I was gonna say, well, that sounds so logical. That makes so much sense. That's true. Even like, even a normal last gun is useless against so many things, but if you put like a, a thousand of them on one target, it's gonna be like, very easy to kill something. So it makes sense that, yeah, there's so many means to actually kill a Primarch, if you really think about it. And then we have the last one that he mentioned. <laughs> You know what? Fair enough, Major Kill. Fair enough. Would all slay a Primarch. However, a Primarch's near invulnerability is a lot less about their physical durability and more so about their destiny bending demigod souls. If someone is destined oh. for greatness, a random stray bolt shot isn't I going talked to blow about. their brains out, or their ship isn't going to malfunction in the warp and explode. To I mean, yeah, we I've seen enough Warhammer 40k videos. I'm pretty sure I have over a hundred, way over a hundred reactions at this point. So, um, yeah, it's, you're, you can say that they have luck on their side. Put it simply, Primarchs literally have plot armor. However, or that, that works too. not really being able to kill Primarchs, they have tried many, many times, and have actually gotten really close, and I think that's worth talking about. Before we get started, it's almost Christmas time, and I have some options for some pretty fucking awesome gifts to give to your loved ones or yourself. Um, funny that I'm, re I'm recording this also when it's near Christmas time. Or is this actually a video that's recent? I don't even know. You can't sponsor yourself, or maybe you can. First up, there are new <laughs> slots open to get pre-painted major minis. This what am I looking is awesome at? Because not only is the tenor I mean, that's obviously a Thousand Sun Sorcerer, but what was the one before? It looked like a... We have new I don't know. Is that the Sister of Silence? I guess, maybe? Pre-painted major minis. This service is awesome because not only is the turnaround time fast, but it means instead of you buying a model, shipping it to a painter, paying them to paint it, and then paying to have it shipped back to you, all of which takes weeks or months, you pay shipping once, and within three weeks the model is sent to your door, assembled, Am I the only one staring at how smooth? It's a fantastic like, service. His All the images here are demo camera that went is for some reason. It's also very cheap compared to normal. You can get a raw painted and I feel like I'm watching standard. something being sped up. That's USD. how smooth that it looks. The cost of the model. If you want it to be I feel like I'm watching standard, something at over a paint job, 60 FPS. Unless that makes them slower, I forgot. It themselves, just buy a major mini it's too smooth. It's making my brain feel weird. Looking at his face. 
I've commissioned 12 amazing Am I the only one that feels that way? depicting some of the most incredible moments from Warhammer 40k's lore. Put into a maybe, high quality uh, 300 Maybe it's just the fact that I don't really watch like normal people anymore. I watch mostly VTubers now. Saint Celestine feeding a great so that, that might be the, 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 the real deal. Human caving in Logar's chest after getting half. Oh, that looks so good. I, I love that. And it's for April when it's my birthday. That's perfect. That's really perfect. My birthday is on April. So this and Gilliman is my favorite point mark. So that being there is just way too fitting and weirdly. Yeah, just weirdly coincidental. I love that. His face torn off and many, many more. Physical calendars aren't just an out of date novelty item. I use mine to record important events or dates once. Eldar Mini. So I use my online or Google calendar for Ferris. boring shit like meetings or appointments. This Where's would make Ferris a fantastic there? gift. Calendars only ran until Monday the 18th of November. The last gift idea, which hasn't launched yet, is the Major Kill Christmas merch drop. This merch drop slaps hard. I'm obviously biased, but we do the merch different here and it also, I normally skip ads, but Major Kill sometimes makes them kind of funny, sure, so... If you want to be notified when this drops next week, then just sign up on the website. Uh, no what am I looking at there? <laughs> it's just to be told when it releases, since it will be a limited drop as usual. Timmy slot lock. So there's pretty solid Christmas options, I'd say. Today, we'll go over every time a space rune is nearly killed a Primarch, detailing how the Finally, survived, yes. as well as a few honorable mentions along the way. What also, I'm here for? I just realized we're literally six minutes into the video and not actually seeing what's what we're supposed to be seeing yet. See for the amazing thumbnail art for this video. Full rest version will be that looks awesome. free. Oh, let's get into it. Finally! So kicking us off with what the thumbnail art for this video was, we have the time an Alpha Legion kill team ambushed Gilliman and nearly assassinated him. When people ask if the Alpha Legion is loyal or not, it gets complicated when they literally try to murder one of the most important loyalist Primarchs. And then they do stuff that helps the Imperium for some reason, so it's, it's weird. Basically, Gilliman had been building Imperium Secundus and heard news of an old friend, a Donai Thiel, a sergeant he fought side by side on Kalth, returning to his side. He welcomed Thiel and his men with open arms, granting them a private audience in his room. They were acting stiff and awkward, none of them removed their helmets. They were tense and even set up an obvious attack pattern. However, Gilliman just assumed that because of how fucked up the fighting on Kalth was, these men were just a bit shell-shocked and untrusting of their surroundings, so he let the red flag slide. Yeah. Kind of reasonable, but kind of surprising. Gilliman of all people let it slide. I, <laughs> I thought he would be like one of the ones to take that into into consideration. It was only at the last second, the tiniest moment before the trap was sprung, did G-Man realize his mistake and take action. The oh, uh, you know what? He realized it eventually, so we're all good. The Ultramarine kill team was actually Alpha Legionnaires in disguise. They immediately began attacking whilst also sealing the entrance into the door off. It was brutal. Gilliman was wearing his light ceremonial armor. Yeah, oh, oh, it's that instance, all I know about is, yeah, the one where he actually managed to beat them without even wearing his Primark armor. Uh, not his proper war plate, so the bullets were breaking through. He was shot, stabbed, and overall fucked up pretty bad. The close quarters of the room, alongside the fact that Gilliman didn't have any cheesy Primark powers, like how Magnus or Corvus did, that could have instantly won him the fight. One by one, though, at great cost, he slew the traitors until only two remained. However, he was shot in the shoulder, with a concussive force hitting him in the head and temporarily blinding him. The Alpha Legionnaire posing as Theo put his blade to Gilliman's neck. G-Man was like, Before you kill me, tell me who you are. The Alpha Legionnaire, full of arrogance common to his legion, said, I am Alpharius. G-Man was then like, it only takes three seconds for a Primark to recover from a concussion, you fucking retard. And he shot the fake field point blank. Oh, so it, even that was a strategy, not like anything. It wasn't just like an actual moment of like being genuinely curious about who it was. He just bought some time for himself by asking a question. So he can re like recover and <laughs> oh that's awesome. He then stood up and shot the last attacker in the head. Gilliman then slumps to his knees, extremely injured and exhausted, as his men burst through the door and take their Primark to the apothecary for healing. Now unfortunately this would not be the only time Gilliman was almost killed by a space marine. During the war in Kalth, G-Man confronts Kor Fearon and engages in battle with him. However, Kor was turbocharged on warp juice at this point and come blasts him with warp energy. At and yeah, just like we mentioned a few moments ago, like Major Kill mentioned, Gilliman doesn't have any psychic powers, so at least at this point, in not I'm not sure if in more recent lore, he's starting to develop something. Um, it kind of feels like he might be going that direction, but yeah, back here he did not have any of that, so kind of 
you know, kind of a big disadvantage against people who use that. As Gilliman is not a psychic Primarch, he just has to kind of eat it, and he is actually quite vulnerable to warp-based attacks. So once yeah. again, he fell to his knees. In his arrogance, Corferon wanted to corrupt Gilliman to show him that no one is incorruptible, so he cuts G-Man's throat with a chaos knife, similar to the knife used to corrupt Horus. However, Gilliman didn't have the same weakness in his heart that Horus did, so he resisted the corruption and then caved Corferon's chest in. Isn't that crazy, though? The same... Like, it's not exactly the same. The whole, like, horror situation was a bit more complicated. But crazy that Gilman managed to stave off the, the corruption and, you know, not be affected. Knowing once again that if you have a Primarch at your mercy, don't fucking hesitate. When Corvus escaped Isfan after losing most of his legion, he had to do a lot of heavy lifting in the subsequent battles. He was often leading from the front and doing the most challenging parts of the battles by himself. As such, he died like nearly five times, all against space marines. One time he wow. fought a word bearer who mutated into a demon beast that was almost as powerful as he was. Another time he got shot out of the sky and then gangbanged by some of Fabius Bal's new men, which at the time were just girthier space marines. Another time a traitor raven guard tried to blow him up. Another time he was in the thick of battle fighting a ton of traitors and then got hit with a missile. Corvus Shit. He really went through a lot. And he ate it hard, only surviving these situations due to last second saves from his warriors or just raw tenacity with a bit of luck thrown in. I like it as it shows why Primarchs can't just solo win battles. If they try, they put themselves in a lot of danger. Any Primarch will eat shit if they're hit with a missile. The juicy yeah. part is that none of these. We all like that, you know, like not them being literally invincible, but having their more realistic human side to them. Death experiences had anything to do with another Primarch. Now Vulcan can't die, but if he could, his first death would have been at the hands of Space Marines. During the Isfan drop site massacre, Ferris was slain by Fulgrim, Corvus led a breakout and escaped, and Vulcan raged and charged the Iron Warrior's gun line. He was so mighty and furious that for a while it looked like he would not be stopped. However, Perturabo dropped a spicy nuke on him, and then a horde of traders charged the wounded Vulcan and dogpiled him, shanking he survived the nuke though, that's kinda crazy. Until he finally died. He would go on to survive. Did he, did he say shanked him? Charged the wounded Vulcan and dogpiled him, shanking him until he. <laughs> oh no! The Iron Warriors, they are British! They are British! He would go on to survive due to being an unkillable perpetual, but if it wasn't for his perpetual power, his death literally would have been from a thousand stab wounds by unnamed traitor space marines. And the new The Lion Beforehand. didn't really have much issue when it came to killing space marines, even his own ones. However, if I got a dollar for every time the Lion was nearly killed by a renegade psychic Dark Angel, I would have two dollars, which isn't a lot, but it's- He was almost killed by his adoptive father, who I keep forgetting the name of. Um... Oh, it's so hard to remember names for me. I'm really having a heart, but you, you know who I mean. Weird that it happened twice. The first was against Luther, who got- Luther! Yeah, that's the name. Turbocharged by chaos. Neither warrior wanted to kill the other, hence they both hesitated. In that hesitation, Luther blasted the lion with chaos power, wounding him and allowing the Watchers in the dark to take him and put him into a coma. And then it took 10,000 years for him to finally awaken. The second time was recently, when Lord Serifax, a fallen Dark Angel Psyker, tried to remove the lion's soul from his body so that he could possess him, which would have killed the lion in the process. It's unclear if it would have worked, as during the spell, the loyalist fallen angels arrived and saved the lion, but it was looking a bit dicey for a bit. Can't trust those fucking renegade Psyker Dark Angels. Yeah, psychic powers are really the most dangerous side of Warhammer 40k so far, aren't they? When Lorgo was trying to turn Angron into a demon prince, a number of World Eaters who didn't have the Butcher's Nail saw what was happening and tried to stop it. All remaining World Eater librarians combined forces and psychically attacked Lorgar, whilst the old Legion Master, a Dreadnought, attacked Lorgar's physical body. They were fucking up Lorgar pretty hard and may have even killed him if it wasn't for Angron ascending and then slaughtering his Legion Master and all remaining I mean, librarians. I mean, a Dreadnought is pretty scary, let's be honest. It does yeah. show that a combined psychic and physical attack on a distracted Primarch is a pretty solid method to kill them. I won't be including the time Lorgar was shot by a Titan twice and then nearly stomped on, as that was a Titan crew, not a Space Marine, that nearly killed him. During the Siege of Terror, Jagadai was a bit of a wild card. Whilst Dawn wanted to sit behind his wall and grind the enemy down, Jagadai wanted to strike out and save the innocence of Terror. He did so, however, got caught up in the Death Guard, with one of them stabbing Jagadai with a Nurgleite knife. His Primarch physiology could resist most of the poison, but it slowed him down and he began getting dogpiled by the Plague Marines. He would have died if Sanguinius didn't arrive to save him then and there. Fulgrim is the uh, one yeah. Primarch on this list that 100% should not have been able to survive the time a Space Marine nearly killed him. He was shot in the fucking head with a high what? caliber needle sniper by the legendary Nakonai Sharikin. He got absolutely- Oh, it's not even the thing I thought about. He boomed in the dome, yet he more or less managed to walk it off. This 
I did not even know there were two stories about Fulgrim. This was also pre-demonic ascension Fulgrim. You could also consider Rylan or blowing up a virus bomb in his face, which was one of the coolest moments in all of 40k lore, as another close call with death virus space marine. Yes. Yeah, well, he did hurt his pride at least. <laughs> he survived, and yes, sure, he's a demon, so he can't really die, but I'm counting it. Let's actually count all demon Primarch banishments at the hands of Astartes, since the banishment is closer to death than nearly dying as a mortal. Angron had his sword broken and then his form banished during the first war for Armageddon by the Grey Knight Hyperion. Magnus got smacked with a Cornite axe and then banished by the Grey Knights during one of the many sieges of Fenris. Mort so many. The situations they knew nothing about. Had his heart cut out and branded by Kaldor Drago before he was banished. The traitor Primarchs have had their shares of L's from loyalist space marines. And finally, Rogel Dawn, who was last seen being dragged down by Black Legionnaires. However, his body was never recovered except for his hand, so it's unclear where he is at. Was that him being killed by space marines, or was it just another near-death experience? There are many, many. I don't know. Like, when it comes to um, when it comes to um conrad conrad curse he had a premonition where dorn would be dead but we already know that it, those like premonitions do not have to be the only future that exists there's multiple variants so it could be that he's still alive but it's pretty hinted that he's dead the other times primarchs were nearly killed or actually killed by non-primarchs such as when horus got shot by a knight and only survived because a bunch of demons body blocked it however that was a knight not a space marine so we're not going to count it if you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel whilst getting someone a fucking great christmas present but wait what about the one i mentioned major mini an unpainted major mini a 2025 calendar or just sign uh... up to get first access to the major kill christmas merch drop going live next week Till the Let's go for uh, more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yes, peace. But what about the one that I mentioned? Is that not... There's no way I made that up right now. Fulcrum fights Sigismund. That happened, right? Book excerpt Saturn... Sat, Sat, Saturnin. Sigismund. So they did fight. So why is that not mentioned? Oh, because it's nearly, it's an, oh, it's nearly death experiences. It's every time a Primarch was nearly killed by a Space Marine. Sigismund only managed to do a little cut on Fulgrim. That's why. Oh, you know what would be funny? If like at the start of the video, when I mentioned this, somebody is like, wait, that's not what the video is about and comments about it in, <laughs> in my comments. And then at the end of the video, they're like, oh, wait. <laughs> Oh wait, he actually realized. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, that would be funny. But anyway, that's it. So thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed watching it, punch the like button with everything you have. Subscribe if you want. But for now, farewell and bye bye.